<clears throat> I had to re record this video because I have tr trouble uploading it. So I'm going to be reviewing Hellraiser 6 Hellseeker, which came out in 2002 and was directed by Rick Bota. Um, this one's infamous. I think the most infamous one in the franchise. Well, the straight to DVD ones at least. Because it brings back Ashley Lawrence as Kirsty. Now, the basic plot of this one is a man and a woman. I forgot the man's name. I think his name is Trev. Trevor, who is played by Dean Winters. Who I know him from the All State Mayhem commercials. He's, he's the one that goes, I mayhem. And I do, you know, those commercials. It's him and Ashley Lawrence's character, Kirsty. They're driving a car at the beginning and they get into a car accident. The car goes over a bridge and into the water. And Dean Winter's character is the only one who escapes. And Ashley Lawrence's character is presumed dead. It cuts to, I guess, a few months later. And Trevor wakes up in the hospital. And he has amnesia, but there's a detective that keeps probing, probing him, asking him these questions because he thinks that Kirsty, that, cause Kirsty escaped from the car and Trevor didn't know it. So the detective might think, probably thinks that the car accident was actually a murder attempt. And Dean Winter's character is like, well, I don't remember, you know, I have amnesia and, you know, it's kind of messed up that you keep pressing a guy who doesn't remember what's hap what happened. He's like, I'm just trying to tell you everything I remember. And the detective, he's kind of cool about it. He's like, well, I know, but we need to solve this case. So throughout the movie, uh, <clears throat> Dean Winter's character is seeing like strange hallucinations and stuff and there's a bunch of these women coming up to him trying to have sex with him and stuff and he don't know who they are and he's kind of getting you know he's like why do you keep messing with me what's you know what's wrong with you guys and then you find out through like flashbacks and stuff that he no uh, he was actually very unfaithful to his wife and he was sleeping around with different women and it's also revealed that um he was not a very good guy and uh, he went and bought the puzzle box off of a man who is actually played by Doug Bradley out of makeup but he has like this long beard and he sells him the puzzle box and he gives the puzzle back box to Kirsty as an anniversary gift and this is all on a video camera that we see this exchange happen and she starts freaking out because she says I told you what what this box did to me and, and what I had to deal with and she's like why would you do that to me and he goes I don't care I just want you to open it and she goes oh I'll open it but it ain't gonna be good and and then you find out that she opened the box and now, is this must kind of like piss me off about this one was it borrows the same plot line from Hellraiser Inferno, which is that you it's revealed that Dean's win winner's character is actually dead, and he's reliving his personal hell. So now he's I guess he just doesn't remember it I guess because. Kind of what happened with the guy in Inferno. He doesn't remember what happened. And so like the end. When Pinhead shows up and reveals what's going on. But Kirsty, You know. Exchanges five souls for. I'm sorry. For. Her wife. So she won't get taken by Pinhead. Which I thought was kind of weird. Because. You know. She escaped twice from Pinhead. By bargaining with him. In the first two movies. Since she opened the puzzle box and 
the first movie. He's trying to get her in that one. He's trying to get her again in the second one. And in this one, she kind of just easily bargains with him. And he allows her to give him five souls. Which I thought was kind of weird. But, yeah. This is my second time watching this movie. And I kind of liked it this time around. It's not a great movie. It kind of did drag on for a while. But, I'll say it's pretty mediocre. Like, there's not much that really happens in it. Um, there's some interesting Cenobites in it. Um, there's one that has like this mask thing that kind of looks like a BDSM mask that sticks a lever, lever and Trev's mouth during the, Trev's mouth during a hallucination and tries to like crank it open. Um, I think this is one, the one with the other Cenobite that has like these bug eyes and it looks really freaky. I think this is the one with that one. Um, there's just, Ashley Lawrence is not really used that much in it. Like she's at the beginning and then she's gone for like throughout most of the movie and she comes back in like a little, like a flashback or on the videotape. And then she comes back at the end then to resolve the story. But that's it. Same thing with Pinhead. He's kind of shoved in there near the end then ch just to wrap up the story. There's not really much for like gore effects either. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sick and I'm trying to clear my nose. Um, there's a, there's like a, a scene at the beginning where they're doing an operation on Dean Winter's character and they're doing like brain surgery and they open up his head and his brain, you see his brain and it looked really real, pretty realistic. And I thought that was a great, they did a great job with that. I also, um, liked Ashley Lawrence in it, even though she's not really in it that much. And, uh, Dean Winters was okay in it. He wasn't that memorable. But I do like a detective, the guy who plays the main detective. Uh, he's a black guy. I don't know his name. Um, he did a really good job, and it's kind of weird that he, but he's like one of the best actors in the movie, and he, for some reason, is playing in a Hellraiser movie. But, yeah, there's just not much to explain with this one. Is like I said, it's decent for what it is. It kind of, like, borrows the same plot line. Like, the, the main character experiencing his own personal hell, like Inferno did. But, yeah, there's not m nothing much memorable, memorable about this besides Cur uh, Ashley Lawrence that comes back as Kirsty and then Doug Bradley as Pinhead. But anyways, that's my review.